Hello, uh, welcome to Pirate Radio 101, or as we probably should have called it, Pirate Radio 10101. The idea behind this panel is that we'd like to show each and every one of you how easy it is to create your own unlicensed wireless radio station, similar to Perfect Radio. And uh, uh, just by way of introduction, I'd like to introduce each of the members of the panel and then let each of them introduce themselves. Let each of them introduce themselves so that they can correct whatever errors might have appeared in the program. On the far left over here is Professor Kleistron. Right here in the middle is DJ Kenzo. My name is Mystery. I'm with Perfect Radio. And here is DJ Ann Animus, fresh off the plane from San Francisco. Now, uh, I guess I'll let Kleistron introduce yourself first, and then for a couple minutes, and then Ken, DJ Kenzo, and uh, correct whatever errors there might have been in the program. Okay, um, I'm the Professor Kleistron. I am your friend. I'd like to thank uh, Man Emmanuel, despite my extremely bad email uh, talents, uh, for recognizing us. Uh, but even far more so, um, I'd like to thank the hacker movement for realizing that Pirate Radio is a very unusual off-spin of hacking. Uh, what Pirate Radio is, is it's to go against uh, a person of power's uh, rules of radio. Um, what, what's in vogue today is to talk about um, what the FCC has thrown out for many, many years uh, since the 1920s and since the 1930s, especially when they when they came past the first Communications Act of 1934. It's illegal for you to have a voice over the electromagnetic spectrum and then identified as radio unless you have some form of um, patronage to them, such as um, uh, such as a license, uh, such as paying them fees. Um, it's very simple. Uh, all uh, we got our uh, pirate radio uh, credentials from James Madison. It's called the First Amendment, the right to freedom of speech. What we're going to do here tonight, today, is we're going to talk about a little bit about the political, just as we roll, and we're also going to show you just uh, a quick and easy uh, uh, FM radio station because it's easy to do. It has something rather, two things really unique about it. You don't turn it on, the timer turns it on unless we want to. And we're, we're solving a lot of the pirate problems. We don't want any one of you to be, we, I don't want anyone to ever turn on a, um, hear how to do pirate radio just so they can be a sitting duck. Nobody should ever stick their arms out. They should do whatever they can do, whether it's 15 minutes a, a week or whether it's, uh, you know, on all, most of the time, but you have to use a little cunning, and you should be results oriented. And uh, but you should always be very safe when you operate a station. You should never be a sitting duck for the for the for the FCC. Uh, the little gadget on top is your uh, CB radio. That's how we conduct the audio into it because the FCC receives most of its reports from listeners and some of them, uh, a few of them have come from other people who know the station, but mainly from listeners. The moment you've removed the uh, source of the audio of the studio from the listeners, you have removed the FCC from the picture in almost all cases. Okay, um, if somebody else would like to speak for a few minutes, how about uh, Kenzo? Yeah, just as a Bring better, specialty. Better introduction. I'm, I'm just, uh, I have a hacking background. Definitely hacking a lot as a child. Um, I spent the last seven years uh, doing experimental radio in one form or another, and I was asked to be on this panel just to talk about uh, the implications of technology on kind of freedom of your ability to express, especially as far as music goes. Um, you know, there's an analogy between you know you want to do things like I believe you should do things like pirate radio with what you do on the internet. We obviously we spent a lot of time this weekend talking about a lot of the forums that are currently out there for having your music out there, and most of the ones that are you know, really getting big are profit-motivated and corporate-controlled, and you know, I, I fear that you know, people are going to give up their freedom of expression that way, the same way that they you know, let their freedom of expression be eroded via you know, broadcast means. So I'm just going to 
talk a little bit about that when it comes up. I believe in free radio. Um, I'd like to just, uh, if I could just kick this off, I'd like to say there's been a few different panels addressing the, the implications of the recent FCC decision to legalize low-power FM, but although it might sound good to you, there's a lot of problems with the legalization movement as it is. Uh, the most glaring problem, as I see it, is that um, LPFM according to the FCC, means you can only have a station of 10 watts or 100 watts, which isn't all that bad, except for the fact that in the largest cities like New York City and Los Angeles and Chicago, I believe, and Philadelphia, and a number of the largest cities, there is no room on the FM spectrum for new radio stations. So the legalization that occurred by FCC mandate on January 20th is actually not much of a victory for our movement, which is why a lot of us are more concerned with taking the fight to the airwaves. Now, there's a number of reasons why we believe that the airwaves are free. It's part of our slogan is the airwaves must be free. Um, the electromagnetic spectrum, as we all know it, uh, comprises the radio frequency or is made up of the radio frequency and x-rays and the higher uh, electromagnetic spectrums, uh, waves that we can't see but we can feel and be affected by. It also includes the visual spectrum. So the FCC, by forcing low power radio stations to apply for licenses from them, seems to me a little ridiculous and something that we can't really accept because, uh, as, as I've said before, um, forcing radio stations to get licenses is a little bit like uh, forcing people to apply for licenses to use the color green. It's all part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Another uh, problem with all of this is that according to the Communications Act of 1934, the FCC really doesn't have any jurisdiction over intrastate transmissions. It's supposed to be concerned mostly with interstate, between state transmissions. So the fact that the FCC has been so effective in closing down small stations of 30 watts that have a listening radius of 5 to 10 miles seems uh, another implication of the fact that the government is taking too much control. Now, the government isn't just acting on its own accord in these uh, instances. In fact, to a large degree, it's, it's acting upon the wishes of the large corporations, the people who pay for the National Association for Broadcasters lobbyists. Um, the FCC is sort of serving the large corporations and limiting our free speech. Um, and I should also point out that the NAB is also working in, in these, uh, in, in this direction with the, uh, with the encouragement of the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and National Public Radio, they've all sort of conspired against uh, radio stations that are transmitting with less than 100 watts of power. And since 1978, when they made it illegal to transmit with less than 100 watts of power, uh, they essentially illegalized free use of the airwaves. Um, I, I would also like to just point out as to the title of the uh, of this panel, that uh, in some ways pirates, uh, it might sound sort of like a scary thing, pirates, um, although the real pirates in, in the business, as many of you hackers probably know, are the large corporations that are truly limiting our free speech, the ones that are saying that you need to have money, you need to apply, you need, you need to raise revenue in order to access the airwaves, and another large part of this is the use of advertising. So with a wireless station, uh, similar to what you see here, which is essentially the structure of a wireless station, you, you too can access the airwaves and begin speaking to your neighborhoods and uh, speaking truth to the powers. Uh, the six corporations that effectively control much of much of 
the six corporations that effectively control most of what we hear and see on the large corporations owned uh, television and radio stations are effectively shutting out the voices of the few and the unheard, which is why in some ways I believe that there is, uh, we can build a coalition between the pirate radio movement and the hackers because we are fighting against the largest corporations. Would uh, one of you like to continue with something? Okay, I have, a, I have a simple and easy answer to the FCC and micro radio and everything. It comes 20 years ago from an old pirate who taught me a lot about uh, how to operate in adversity. His name was Dr. Thomas Chatterton Jr. He was used the radio property of the airways. It comes in the form of a song. We are the government men throwing carriers in your brain. We are the government men, we'll cause you lots of strife and pain. We are the government men, deceiving you most every day. We are the government men, we'll always try to be in your way. Pay your taxes, go to school, gotta talk, don't be a fool. Get a wife and have some kids. And then you'll be on the skids. We'll suck your blood dry. Not a chance to wonder why. <laughs> now, one of the things you have to understand about having a pirate radio station is um, one of them is where are you going to put it? Okay. Um, over there's plenty of room over top of the fridge, but um, generally it's not a good place to run your audio. I like to put the station under the bed or next to the bed, and I like the CB radio that develops the audio modified sound better. I like it on my bed because you do better radio laying on your back because you don't have other distractions. Another, another thing is you don't really have to do the whole show yourself. You run wireless, uh, maybe your girlfriend is in good, in, on good terms with you. She talks on the other radio, it comes to you, the timer comes on, your station is on, or you might just uh, like, uh, Having the CB radio feed the, uh, the FM radio station, we sometimes battle with CB ears on the air. We just put it on the air. It's good programming. Good programming could be um, it could be cooking shows. It could be driving to work. It could be coming back from work. Uh, if you go to a picnic, uh, set up a, a spare CB to feed into your FM radio station or your something you might be crafty to an AM station. But you know, feed your audio from somewhere else. It's going to be the secret when a pirate television starts to appear in a few years. That's going to be the secret, is transferring your picture and audio. In this case, transfer your audio. It's so much better than uh, doing boring. Uh, it's, it already got the FCC uh, chasing the wrong part of the city, because they listen to nothing but the people who are calling them. And almost nobody, uh, almost nobody calls uh, the FCC on the radio. So, you know, try to, try to keep your... In Try to keep your programs interesting, try to keep them a little raunchy, don't worry about anything. But most important is uh, also make sure you bite off as much as you can chew. And my next, my next subject when it gets back to me is uh, how to get results with the equipment itself. Uh, next person. What, Ann? Well, I can tell you a little bit about my background, but first I'd like to correct the song, it said, uh, you know, grab a wife. You can also grab a husband and he's equally as distracting as a wife. <laughs> free radio is all about freedom of expression, as you guys know. So you can correct anybody, you can say anything you want, you can spread a message. I do. Anything else we need to talk about? More about the technology here? Well, more on the free expression. Again, you know, thinking about things like mp3.com, um, you know, which a lot of people are embracing right now as a way of, you know, the, the little guy sort of getting to get his music out there. I mean, it's not really, it, you know, it's, it's hardly free expression because, um, you know, they are filtering. They do, you know, they, they're currently filtered for, you know, they don't always explain the reasons, but they're not going to include all music up there because, they do have a profit motive. They are trying to align, you know, with. Uh, I, I think they made a deal with the RIA. They're gonna, you know, it's just a matter of time before they completely align with the same goals that the major labels and whatever the goals of the major corporations are. And um, it's not going to be. 
it's not going to continue to be, if it even can currently be considered to be, a way for everyone to get their voice out there. So people have to, you know, as far as using technology goes, you've got to retain the freedom. You've got to, you know, form your own outlets, you know, get your own channels out there. You know, we should have groups of sites that are, you know, run by, you know, non-profit individuals, um, you know, who are not, because all, you know, if you look at, you know, the patterns of all the various sites that we've seen, or the various channels we've seen, one by one, they've all either gone, you know, the way of trying to make a large profit, or they've been bought out by organizations that are trying to make a large profit. In the end, we're just going to see, if we're not careful, if we don't do something about it, we're going to see the same thing on the internet that we're seeing everywhere else. We're going to see just a couple of corporations controlling everything, and then we're going to lose our ability to have the, you know, the, the free expression. I think we have to remember that um, uh, pirate radio and the problems that we're having in the FCC is only an American problem. The real pirate problem is a world problem that renews itself uh, everywhere. And that all countries and all governments and all empires are uh, causing problems for people who want to communicate in any way, be it, uh, be it hackers, be it uh, their sites being uh, radio, which is, it's a different type of communication, but it is not. We're all the same thing. We're just all trying to uh, do our First Amendment. Um, let's thank um, um, uh, James Madison. But it's it's not a it's not our problem. It's everybody's problem. And but what we basically have to remember is keep the eye on the wall. Just keep it real simple. Forget about all these zipper heads and their uh, stupid laws. Um, let, let's just keep marching on. Keep marching around. Let's not sacrifice anybody for any movements. Let's do the, the same thing that works for them for us, is uh, spread it out. We'll all be little bitty heroes at the edge of the cookie, nibbling away at it like ants. And let's just uh, squash them. As they say on the CB, just squash them. Just squash them. Uh, one of the interesting things that an unlicensed radio station can do that licensed radio stations cannot do is provide programming on a much smaller level or a much different level. You don't hear informative programming on uh, some of the bigger radio stations like K Rock, for instance. Uh, you don't hear programs that are two minutes in length, whereas with our unlicensed radio station, depending on the time of the year or whatever's happening in our neighborhood, we can provide emergency weather updates. We can, we can provide our neighborhoods with uh, traffic reports. If the subways are out in the area, we can let our communities know how to plan for it and what, what, a, what a different plan uh, could, what you can do to plan in advance of some of these problems. With an unlicensed radio station, we don't have to uh, adhere to the FCC saying that you need to spend $5,000 to upgrade to the emergency alert system when the emergency broadcast system, which was in uh, in use for 20 or 30 years, was good enough. But the FCC uses these methods to force radio stations to put more money into their stations, to put more, to adhere to these larger corporations that ultimately and effectively are controlling most of the media that we're most familiar with. Um, as I was, I've been speaking with Ken about trying to figure out how to relate all of this to hackers, and um, I guess the, the most important thing to think about is in terms of thinking, thinking in the future, because everyone knows that the hackers are at the cutting edge six years before the rest of the culture reaches that point. With uh, Effectively, you can create your own computer network, which can be voice activated by having a base station where you can transmit to the other computers within the network. And with the voice recognition technology that will, I assume will probably be uh, becoming more and more prevalent in the near future, you can effectively turn on different computers in different areas of the neighborhood. So if you're a hacker and you're worried about being discovered, suddenly you would uh, they would have to try to figure out where you're coming from, where you're hacking from, and they wouldn't be just trying to locate, to triangulate one location, they'd end up finding a whole network, and it might just be run by one person who may or may not be present at the time. With a timer and a wireless station, you can be anywhere you want, as long as you're 
timer is going off and your voice activated recorders will go off at the same time. So in some ways, pirate radio or wireless radio transmissions can really provide a safety buffer for a lot of different things that haven't yet taken hold. Um, there's an old saying from uh, Vietnam when the when the water goes up, the uh, the fish eat the ants. When the ants go, when the water goes down, the ants eat the fish. So it's going to be with our governments and pirate radio. Uh, the largest the largest active activism of uh, pirate radio occurred in 1946. So far, not not in the present, but it was as we had. Um, Thousands upon thousands of servicemen, U.S., English, other um, and other countries. Many of them were uh, stuck on ships that were sitting, going nowhere, as my father was, uh, going absolutely dead in in the water. And a tremendous amount of them were uh, the radio men and their friends. What they did was they uh, mutinied uh, out of boredom, and uh, they took all all these uh, military radios and they whipped it up. They just whipped it up for about uh, four months, and uh, none of the commanding officers, since there was no real enemy during the Second War, uh, after the Second War, none of their commanders would uh, stop it because they were they needed some kind of a shore leave or something. They could not find any other outlet, and so the uh, thousand, uh, many, many, many thousands of uh, military radios just uh, turned into pirate radio stations because it was against the uh, rules of the armed forces. And uh, on the other hand, um, uh, some pirates have had to very easily have a, a, ch a chance to speak without ever so much. Uh, pirate radio means that my grandfather's cat, you know, who, who can transmit on, who can not, according to the FCC. My grandfather's cat was a pirate uh, because I always used to put uh, Mino on the air. Uh, I don't ever want to hear. Um, a government uh, make rules like they have now about uh, are you now, have you ever been a pirate during this uh, period of time? That's what the FCC is doing. It means nothing to me. Be a better pirate, uh, be a better hacker, be a better speaker, um, uh, be a better host at your picnic. And so, um, again, on, as it relates to the internet, um, you know, we want to keep you know, there's all the, there's the different form, you want to like, we, we should have our own open formats um, for streaming information, we should make sure that we're using channels where you don't have just a single point that can get shut down. Um, we've got to, you know, another thing we've got to look for in the medium to long term is, right now we still have the freedom to access, you know, the internet from all sorts of, you know, ways, but clearly, you know, the government and or corporation is going to try to, you know, gain more and more control with cooperation of the phone companies or whoever else, um, if we lose the ability to control these channels we have into the internet at all, um, and if you know there are more and more regulations that get passed that prohibit certain kinds of transmissions via the internet, um, then we'll lose you know that means of you know doing the same thing that you know you're doing with a wireless pirate radio station. So again, we've got to make sure that you know we encourage open open formats and we come up with systems, you know, cooperative systems where there's, you know, we're not going to lose control over this channel so that we can continue to have that voice out there. Because don't, you know, don't be complacent into thinking that just, you know, everything is great now, everyone, you can just plug in, you can just get your stuff out there, you, can, you know, whatever you want, because people are actively working to take that away from us. We've got to make sure that we keep ahead of that and we're ready, you know, no matter, you know, no matter what tries to get shut down or taken away. We've got something you know, to, to supplement it. I was just going to say that um, you know, free radio could be your second avenue. I mean, if you're computer-based and that's what you do and you're, well, that's what you're interested in, just remember that a pirate radio station, there's plenty of room for one in most towns. I mean, I don't know if you all live in cities or not, but if you live in a small town, there's probably more room for you or a smaller city. It can be your second avenue, you know, I mean, it can be your backup you will. And also it's a really great way to help create a nice uh, community for yourself. And I mean literally like, you know, some cities are boring or you don't have anything to do. And if you've got a pirate radio station, you can communicate with people who live directly around you. And, you know, you play music and, you know, you can communicate with people around you. And it's a really great way to um, meet people. 
and communicate. I, uh, <clears throat> I was just listening to Richard M. Stallings give his presentation a little bit ago, and it was, it was kind of interesting because he was talking about the four freedoms. First of all, he's talking about freedom, the, the different definitions of freedom. Of course, this free is in Christ. And in that way, pirate radio or wireless radio isn't free because obviously you need to get the equipment or you need to build the equipment and you need the equipment to uh, get on air. The other way is uh, free is in freedom. Uh, the analogy you can use is, is it's free beer versus free speech. And obviously we're talking about free speech. Now what, what Mr. Stallings was talking about with free software is that there's four freedoms of free software. Freedom zero, which is the freedom to run the software for yourself, meaning you can run some software on your local computer. Freedom one is to help yourself by modifying programs to suit your needs. Um, obviously, you can tinker with your software and, and make it more to your, to your needs in the same way as with a radio station. Uh, freedom zero would be to get the equipment and be on the air. Freedom one would be to uh, create programming that is of interest to you. If you're a, a rock and roll fan or an electronica fan, you would probably have more freedom or more music in that direction than someone who might be interested in jazz or, or blues. Uh, freedom two, according to Richard M. Stallings, is the freedom to help your neighbor. <clears throat> and with a wireless radio station that's broadcasting, you know, two to five or ten miles, depending on the height of your of your antenna as well as the power that you're putting out. Uh, to help your neighbor is to be transmitting information about weather updates or transportation updates or whatever that is of interest to your neighborhood. Freedom three, and the fourth of the four freedoms, freedom three is the freedom to build up your community. And the way we see it, or the way I see it with, with radio stations, micro radio, low power radio, pirate radio if you will, is the freedom to build your community. And the community is sort of a larger, larger community than just your neighborhood. So once you start building on each of these freedoms, you're actually building uh, the effectiveness of your radio station. And ultimately, you're helping to create a whole community, a whole network of wireless radio stations that are allowing unheard voices, unheard bands, unheard ideas, access to the free airwaves. So it's really important to realize that these four freedoms are uh, can be transported from the hacker world or from the computer world yeah. to the free radio movement. And if you're willing to give it give it a go and start with yourself and then start with your neighborhood and then move up to the community, then we can really, really create a change and make these big corporations uh, understand that there are unheard voices. And as Jello Biafra said in his keynote speech, if you don't like the media, become the media. And this is, an, this is a very easy way for you to get started doing it, to, to uh, bring the media to people who may not have access to the internet quite yet, to people who only have a, a radio receiver at this point, or a CV for that matter. That's right, that's right, Mr. You remember a lot of people don't have computers yet, and a lot of people don't know the best way to use them. But you know what? Everyone flips around on the dial. Uh, I used to live in Spring Valley, New York, and the Spring Valley Library would not let you email your mother on Mother's Day. Um, uh, everything deals with a limited resources. It could be limited uh, budget, could be limited know-how, could be limited. Um, it could be uh, limited legal resources. It could be uh, limited equipment resources. It could be limited space. And that's a subject. Um, pirate radio stations can sometimes act like commercial radio stations, and commercial radio stations can sometimes act like pirate radio stations. Let me mention our gracious host, um, Emmanuel Goldstein, on um, uh, Off the Hook, here on WBAI, um, a licensed 50,000 watt radio station. It's very, very often does not act like a station. Um, we sometimes call in, when, they, when I'm in range, I sometimes call in, for instance, on Bob Fass, and he hosts, um, he's had um, talks uh, about the Red Orchestra, about programming, like there was a station I can't mention the name of, and a little girl 
she was uh, playing Disney radio in the background, 1560, and she was on a pirate radio station uh, somewhere in the city, can't get even a, a location of, and she goes, angels, and she goes, Disney sucks. <laughs> And uh, just, just remember, the pirates can also act like commercial stations. Uh, so remember, it's only radio. Let's have fun. You know, let's, let's have, have your political line. Have, uh, have your raunchy sense of humor. Have it all. You know, play whatever, play whatever you want on it. Play your parakeets, uh, you know. So makes sense. Yeah, and, and let's remember that, free, you know, again, freedom of expression means you can express whatever you want. You know, we shouldn't have to worry about infringing on someone's ownership of something. We shouldn't have to worry about being labeled pornographers because, you know, they just happen to have a particular thought or another and we try to express it. So, you know, we have to, while we're, make, you know, working to retain our, you know, our free channels, we have to make sure that we keep the, the law on our side so that we're actually allowed to say things and we're allowed to express them. We don't have to worry that someone could just come along and say, oh, well, you just talked about, you know, how, how Napster works, so you just infringed upon a copyright or a patent or whatever, and you know, now you owe somebody like a million bucks. You know, you're not going to have freedom of expression in that environment, so we've got to work constantly to make sure that we have those rights. Um, I was uh, just setting up the antennas for a radio station, and it had special operating rules. One of its wireless studios was in a bedroom of a married couple. What they told me was, if you hear any squeaking or bumping noises, make sure that you uh, change programs and go to commercial. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, I, I guess, uh, I mean, we could uh, open this up to questions, but if, if it's all right, I'd like to play one of my two-minute long radio shows. I used to do a two-minute long radio show every day, and uh, tried in my small way to speak truth to power. Um, of course, if you are computer literate and, and have access to a CD writer, uh, you can create your own CDs and basically create programming for weeks on end, or at least days on end, just by putting a basic CD disc in, such as this. But if I can comment before you go on, again, that's a freedom we've got to work to, to retain. Right now, you know, assuming we've got the money, we can make our own CDs, that's great, but you know, at some point, we could lose that ability because, did, did anyone here know how to make your own CD writer and could you make it from raw materials? Um, you know, stuff wasn't assembled by some factory somewhere. Um, if, if, you know, if, if, let's say, either laws are passed or, let's say, Sony buys up all the companies out there that manufacture all the parts that ultimately would come together to let you make a CD writer, or if laws are passed as they already have been, to start to, to impose kinds of taxes on media, you know, like when you buy a blank tape, when you buy a blank CD, you know, there's money going to the record industry, you know, whether you're going to use that to copy music or not. You know, when that starts to get out of control, um, you're not going to be able necessarily to make your own CDs. If someone out there is controlling the laws that ultimately let you have that equipment or have that media, so once again, it's you're short of fight to retain that right because people are going to be working to take that away from us. And also, actually, Ken and I have spoken about this in private before, but there's also some question about the uh, obsolescence of technology. Like, he, he's of the opinion that some of these CDRs that we can buy for a dollar fifty or two bucks in the store are, have a smaller lifespan than CDs, the, the CDs that you might get from a major label. I'm, I'm not exactly sure if that's true, but there's all kinds of different rumors that haven't really been addressed about CDs. Like, Another friend of mine, a musician friend in Minneapolis, has been telling me that if you're storing your CDs vertically, uh, like many radio stations, many legitimate radio stations are doing, the information is actually slowly sliding down the CD. So there's a question about how should we be uh, storing our CDs and whether or not these cheaper CDRs that we can pick up in stores are going to last 10 years or, you know, ideally, half as long as vinyl records used to. Can you say anything about that? Or? Right, well I think, I don't know about the sliding thing exactly, but um, the, I mean, we do know that, that CDRs have a, you know, relatively, expected to have a relatively short lifespan. 10 years is the common estimate, and I guess it's less if they're under heat and all that. The same thing, you know, with, you know, people talk about, and it's true, no one can stop us from, you know, there's how many, you know, whatever the number is, CDs out there with music on them. No one can stop us from copying those CDs. You know, they're out there, we've got computers that can do it. 
you know, we can put stuff onto CD, that's great, but we've seen the industries band together to, you know, make technology obsolete. In the short term, no one is going to be able to stop us from talking this music, but, you know, when it starts becoming impossible to find a CD player, when all your computers and CD writers all break, and there's no one out there to give you service on them, and then the next thing, you know, that replaces the CD is something that has, you know, more, something that, you know, is better at preventing abuse to, or copying or whatever, you know, it's just going to get harder and harder, and, you know, hopefully we'll be able to, you know, whatever, Tech, you know, means of restriction are put into place, we're able to, you know, hack into those and come up with ways to subvert them. But there's going to be, you know, there's going to be an end point. There's going to be where it becomes way too difficult to do that, or where the law is just absolutely not on our side, and, you know, we've seen what kind of uh, tactics the government can resort to, to, you know, to make examples of people and punish them for trying to subvert these technologies. Um, so, you know, again, don't take for granted what we have, because you know, it could definitely go away, and, you know, just probably not in the next couple of months, but in the next few years, we're going to be potentially going to see very big changes. We're already seeing laws that are you know, restricting freedoms in ways that we never imagined were going to happen, um, you know, making it illegal for us to even study how something works. That's reverse engineering. You can't reverse engineer. And you know, so we're, we're in an environment where laws like that can be passed, you've got to be you know, really worried. and You've got to actively be working to get out there and stop this stuff from happening. I want to play your little show. Oh, sure. Sorry, if I could indulge you for two minutes. Um, this is a two-minute long show. Yeah. I hope it'll play all right. probably cost more than our radio station, okay? Um, these days, uh, we, if you want to start an FM radio station, then that's pretty much what's involved because that's what's easy now. Uh, you might do info, aceworld, veronica.co.uk, and uh, Amano, no, no compressor with um, um, one watt plus five watts is about $350 US exchange, uh, pre-built. In its case, the amp we use, uh, just the one station you see right here, that's uh, five to thirty. That's another hundred sixty dollars. 
We got our power. I got the. I picked up the power supply in Canal Street, the 8 a.m. for five dollars. The CB radio um, was modified for two dollars over cost. Some cables, a few resistors to put the audio in. The timer that that mystery is holding is the secret to turning on the radio station when you're not home. For instance, it also keeps you on schedule. You see what I'm really saying? Well, I'm telling you how to do this specifically. Oh, oh, by the way, um, red underscore orchestra ace world hotmail.com and I, t um, I type about 40 words an hour if you want to get in touch with me and start a station. Anyone else want to give out an email? Well, I might as well say that uh, the bio about me is incorrect and I don't run the free music archive. Uh, if you, if you, I do have a site which is at free-music.com slash Ken. I have no affiliation with the Music Archive, however. And information about uh, all the radio shows that I do at upcoming events are available there as well. Uh, I actually also have a correction. I've actually never been to Philadelphia. Uh, and uh, actually, I guess as long as we're testifying, I'm, I'm no longer known as Mystery. I, I uh, had to kill him off once the Village Voice put him in an article, so there is no mystery, but if you'd like to contact Perfect Radio, you can at perfectradio at hotmail.com. And I'd like to just uh, apologize to Ken for, for uh, saying that he runs a site that he doesn't necessarily uh, Right. However, it is. A, it but is I a, love the site. It is a, a great site. site. There's a there's a lot of really interesting articles. The the really well known one written by Steve Albini about how all the major bands are being screwed by the labels and the Negative Land article about compact discs discs and how the major labels have been overcharging us for years for for compact discs as their prices for making them have gone down. They've continued at the same price and continued paying the artists the same amount that they were, the same percentage that they were originally giving them when they were still selling vinyl records, but I, I do apologize for that. That's fine. And yes, yeah, you should really support the free music philosophy. That site is a non-profit organization. There are other ones out there that are non-for-profit, which are about distributing music, not at you know, profit to, to the, you know, the organizations that are doing it. You've got to work to you know, create more outlets like that. Uh, I'd like to bring up a subject strictly for hackers because it's kind of a, it's definitely an in between between radio and hacking. It's called arrow boards. When you drive on the highway, there are these boards. Originally, they just used to say caution, turn left, caution, left, turn left. They used to flash lights, but now they're smart. They usually carry something such as um, cellular phones. You'll see a little antenna on them. They take a coded message over the and directly over the airways, which is uh, computer generated and they create entire graphics and it could say things like um, it could say something like the New York State Thruway uh, Authority advises you to slow down to 35 miles an hour because uh, uh, heavy rains have been, uh, warnings have been posted but you can put them on and say Hacker 2000 uh, conference uh, or you can say I'm going on the air at uh, 2 p.m. Uh, on uh, 5.30 a.m. and then of course people turn their uh, car radios to 5.30 a.m. and they hear uh, this is the Royal Red Orchestra New York State Hall of Thruway Highway Advisory Radio Station. We wish to inform you that uh, pirate radio is not a crime if you just tune in, tune in to our website or our phone number and blah blah blah. Or uh, that it will, you are not listening to enough pirate radio and you should do it yourself. So um, I guess we're going to open it to questions, but I, I would also like to echo Kleistron's, Professor Kleistron's words about uh, Emmanuel Goldstein and his wonderful show, Off the Hook, which airs um, all around the world through the internet now, by the way, uh, but also specifically on WBAI on Tuesday evenings at 8 p.m. They've had some incredible programs over the last few months, especially back in, uh, what, late November, early December, when Amy Gooden was calling in from Seattle as she was under attack by the, the police force, the, who knows, National Guard or whatever. She's calling in to Emmanuel Goldstein, giving a play-by-play -play description of cops tear-gassing her and thousands, tens of thousands of, of innocent protesters. So, you know, pirate radio is one way for us all to get access to the free airwaves, but another way just to be affected by it is to keep tuning in to WBAI or specifically to Off the Hook. And my hat is off to Emmanuel Goldstein and the 2600 
people for that great show and for also putting on this great conference. Now, I guess we can open up the, are you guys game for opening it up to, to questions? If anyone has any questions about MP3s or, or uh, radio streaming, you know, uh, maybe we can try to answer them. So, um, uh, how about you right there? Uh, Emmanuel asked us not to uh, turn it on. It's just sensible because, um, for instance, we've, uh, you guys did a very good job of uh, showing the play last night. So we have people walking in and out. An unfriendly crowd wouldn't be a good thing for a host. Let me just explain how it works, okay? Our system in particular, you see, what it's about is solving problems for Pirate Radio, making it friendly, making it easy, making it reliable. On the top is a... Um, okay, start with the timer. Oh, okay. The timer means you do not necessarily have to be there. It's a Radio Shack 611065. Will be the source if you're plugging into the AC lines. The media station comes on with one second accuracy. Anybody who's transmitting, anybody who's listening, anyone who's just doing a, a wireless um, uh, signal into the station, they're all uh, split second accuracy and they're, they're there or always square. Um, but the station as a rule runs off of 12 volts. Um, Okay, you don't have to move anything around. Um, what I'm holding right now is a wireless microphone, which is not a wireless studio. A wireless microphone goes, it's a Mr. It's a, I don't know, five or a hundred or a thousand dollar Mr. Microphone. It's a very short range, uh, super professional sounding radio. What we do is we use a modified CB radio to bring the audio. It's just a, a, a very easy, sensible cure, and it's duplicatable. It brings the audio, and then it carries it into a genuine factory, cottage industry built. No, get your hands away so people can hear it. See, it. it's beautiful. It's a, it's a Veronica 1 and 5 watt um, uh, mono, because uh, that's what we ordered without a compressor. We get along with that one. Factory built English um, FM radio station. And, and above it is a little tiny Veronica amp which kicks it up to 30 watts, which will give you a typical 12 miles if you use an Omni antenna, such as a Comet. Below it is uh, the power supply, $5 from 269 Canal Street. Um, uh, but generally you pay about $50. Uh, you can home make antennas, you can buy antennas. Um, one of my antennas was free, it was after dark, actually it was broken and unwanted. And uh, CB antennas, the lifeblood of carrying audio. This is only FM. Uh, you see, when like I take WBAI and play it on CB, that's the reverse of what this is. This is CB into FM, and you don't have to be there, and you don't have to turn it on or off. Uh, it's only a solution. It's a duplicatable, it's easy, and that's what you should try to make your pirate radio. You should try to make it reliable, clean on the air. You should make it totally portable. 12 volts is good for everything from canoes to uh, bush planes to automobiles to your uh, bedroom to your kitchen. Um, to your uh, motorcycle um, battery uh, at, at the picnic. What it's really about is results-oriented brand making, where the station builds out, makes everything from better programs to better reliability to, um, to keeps people working together. Um, I might add that this is only the first studio, because anybody who has that little CD on the top, a tiny power supply source of any kind, and even a homemade antenna, is a potential studio for um, for the Red Orchestra, or for Perfect Radio, or for any station uh, that's doing this with it in the, tr the tremendous range of CB. When something goes on in the air and it's not friendly to us, or something it pops in, we just hope for that it's humorous because we laugh with it. Um, yeah, you had a question there. There's something called bumper cars, okay? Uh, when a seagull takes off uh, for flight uh, every day, he has no assurance that, his, uh, that he's going to find enough food. 
There are no guarantees except that license that they created for gigantic multinational corporations and, and whatnot. Is what is heading somewhat toward, but basically is, is license stations that we that pander to the FCC. I'll get to you in a second. There are no guarantees because there is nobody who has any rights to be the big cheese. When you speak, you have a right to speak properly and to be allowed to speak, but you don't have to be the only person anybody can speak against you. Just as your voice can be drowned out, your signal can be drowned out, there is no reason whatsoever why any radio station has a right not to be interfered with with another radio station. We try to, for practical in instances, want to make exceptions to that with what we label distress calls. Anything such as the, anything two ways, such as aircraft, anything that we love to abuse, like FC, like the FC, the, like the uh, what we, I just called it uh, abuse, use like the uh, CB. Um, I respect the Channel Nine. I just happen to like the idea that this is uh, an emergency channel, right? Besides from distress. Um, it's bumper cars. Nobody, I don't care who it is, uh, Channel, um, it's Channel 7, ABC in New York City, and another TV station wanted to turn on their frequency. Ultimately, nobody has a right to the airwaves over anybody else. If the radio waves are the same as your voice, nobody has a right to be the big cheese. If, if I can just follow up on it, um, Ralph Nader used to speak about how corporations now have greater rights or more rights than a lot of individuals. So the, with the consolidation of the radio spectrum, it's gotten to the point where some station, some companies are owning over 800 radio stations across the country. So even if we are interfering with them, which we don't advise, but uh, I mean, it's to our benefit to choose an unoccupied frequency and to keep a clear signal so that our signal won't be interrupted or interfered with by theirs. Um, that's, that's part of it. Another thing I, I would just like to throw out is that in other countries, like in Japan, for instance, they have a different FM spectrum than we do here. In Japan, they have different radios that have a spectrum from 76 to 92 or 96 megahertz. So one of the things that I've been trying to get the FCC to address would be to broaden our spectrum so that we can have hundreds of new radio stations being created in, in cities or throughout the country, I mean, thousands throughout the country. If we can get them to broaden the spectrum for the next 12 years before we all go digital, which is, which is in the cards, by the way, if we can get them to broaden the spectrum and create new radios or force the companies to create new radios going down to 86, and that would be simply achieved by saying to television stations that you can no longer transmit on channel six, uh, then we would have the FM spectrum down to 86. Uh, that, uh, that would be a, a good way, to, a good start. I'm sorry, I said 86, I mean 82. If we were to say, if the FCC were to say also that you can't have channel 5, it would go down to 76. So there, there are different ways that we can get these things addressed and, and free the airways for more people, more voices, more diversity. Uh, we look at a watch, uh, we're just about to run out of time. Uh, Let's make it a good one. Yes, we will. It will be in the in the display uh, area over there. But I would just like to say that if you're transmitting 24 hours a day for for a few weeks, you'll be safe, but not for very long. If you're transmitting a couple times every day, or a couple minutes every day, or a couple hours every day, with the limited range, and you're not interfering with anyone else's signal, any other radio station signal, it's, it's pretty unlikely that the FCC is going to find you. The only way that they usually can find you is if a, another radio station makes files a complaint with them and says, this station is interfering with our signal, which has happened. But if you're not transmitting regularly, you know, regular hours for extended hours all day, all night, then it's, it's a lot more unlikely. And with a timer, there, it's sort of like a victimless crime. There's, there's no criminal. So I, I hear what you're saying, though. OK, just remember. Um that they mainly, uh, your government agency mainly just practical purposes. Initially, they, they only find you by um, where um, 
where uh, the public has reported uh, your, your signal to be heard from, for practical purposes, is, is rarely, unless you run tremendous power, that they find you themselves. Um, listen, our, our show is out of time, and uh, uh, can we take one more call? Like we're just a few minutes short. AM is radically different from FM in terms of its wavelength and the way it bounces. Um, uh, for instance, WFAT, its first night of operation, 50 watt uh, military set out of Brooklyn. Uh, the first call back they got when they dared to give out their phone number was Albany, New York. It was nighttime. Um, AM radio is just going to be, in terms of licensing, is going to be very much the same picture as FM, and in a very short time of perhaps a year or so, 